Hello, my name is Wade Nimmer, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. One of the initiatives that Rotary takes a good, strong look at is peace, peace initiatives and uh, peace and conflict resolution. This dates back all the way to when the United Nations was formed, because actually Rotary was a part of organizing the United Nations. With me today, I have one of our experts from our district, uh, Nick Frankel, past district governor, who is the chair of the Peace Builder Clubs Initiative. Welcome, Nick. It's a pleasure to be here, Wayne, to talk to you about the role that Rotary plays, not just all over the world, but at very uh, at home in our own community to build a more peaceful society. Great. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Uh, I am a past district governor. I'm a member of the Rotary Club of Westlake Village in Sunrise in Thousand Oaks. Been in Rotary for about 16 years, and I became interested in peace building as I saw the impact that Rotary had not only locally but in many of the countries that I visited to see the impact of Rotary projects on the local community. Great. So tell us a little bit about this Peace Builder Club that you're working with. What is that program? Well, you know, it's interesting, Wade, because as you mentioned, Rotarians have always been peace builders. All the way back to when our founder, Paul Harris, during World War I, challenged Rotarians to have the moral courage to speak about peace instead of war. And so what we're trying to do is help the Rotarians in our district and the people in the community that we serve understand that virtually everything we do in the community builds peace. Good, good. So as a little sales pitch, why would somebody, an audience member, be interested in seeing what these initiatives are about? How do they benefit from this initiative that you're working with? Well, I think we all benefit from a more peaceful community, and I think we have to take an approach that says peace is more than just the absence of violence. Peace is the ability to thrive, to be healthy, to have access to education, uh, to be able to reach your own potential. And if we view v peace in that method, then it's tremendously important to everyone. On the other hand, if you really want to look at it in dollars and cents, violence costs the world almost $15 trillion wow. a year, wow. or about $5 a day for every person alive. Wow. And imagine what we could do with the money if we could just reduce that violence by 5 or 10%. Sounds good. Now, you brought with you uh, some of the PowerPoints, I guess, that talk a little bit about Right, this. I have. So if you'd like, we could jump into that. I, would then, uh, I think I would welcome uh, that okay, opportunity. Okay, sounds good. So the first slide that we have coming up talks about basically the, uh, I guess, the program itself. This is the program. Our Rotary theme this year is Rotary Connects the World. Mm -hmm. And it is so applicable to peace because peace anywhere in the world impacts all the people who are associated with that community, Great. whether they're local or global. Sounds good. Yeah. So, you know, my thought was, let's talk, take a look at where we are today. Uh, 800 million people in the world live on less than $1.90 a day. 14% of the world's population is illiterate. Every minute, a woman or a child is sold somewhere in the world. If we can eliminate those kinds of activities, we can build a more peaceful community. Great. Great. And if you now, you, you take a look and you say, okay, well, what is peace? I think we all start with recognizing that peace is the absence of violence. But it's more than that. There are other inhibitors to peace. Lack of education, lack of access to health care, lack of access to opportunity, and perhaps most important of all, hopelessness. And so when we be, look at peace building, we look at the opportunity to, re, in, re, to remove those inhibitors to a more peaceful community. Great, great. So um, slide here with the five pictures on it then kind of reflects in what you were just talking absolutely, about and discussing. Absolutely, absolutely. That if you look at those five areas, there are all areas where we as individuals we don't have to carry a rifle. We don't have to wear a blue helmet. We don't have to go to a conflict and mediate between the two protagonist, antagonists. We can do something right where we live 
to improve the peacefulness of our community. Sounds good. So when we look at peace, uh, this next slide here, um, we're passing the inhibitors now into the next slide. We have two columns talking about... Which is what can we do? Okay. We can provide water and sanitation. We can provide access to education. We can provide economic opportunity. Mm -hmm. We can provide access to health care. We can provide hope to communities that don't have hope. And when we move on through the presentation, I'll talk to you about some things that we're doing that people wouldn't necessarily think Tell create me. peace. Very interesting. So it's extremely diverse. So we're not talking about just conflict specifically. We're talking about peace in a broad sense. We're talking about peace and a way of life. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Good. And then in our next one, a uh, picture shows how it's impacting the globe. Well, the interesting thing is, I think that you know that Rotary sponsors six and now seven peace centers around the world where people who want to study and become professional or proficient in peace mediation go to study. In fact, you know our district just sent Terence Stevenson to Bradford in the UK to study. This map shows where Rotary peace fellows are deployed around the world. We train them, we teach them to mediate, and about half of them have continued in jobs in peace and mediation, and other than many of them are associated with nonprofits that address all of the issues we've just discussed. And why do you think Rotary puts funds aside for this through the foundation? Do you have any, um, I would say, advice or reasons for specifically the initiatives towards peace? Well, you know, President Harry Truman, in talking about Rotarians, said if he had a Rotary Club in every community, peace would be easy. Hmm. And I think that one of the things that Rotarians have always engaged in, whether they call it peace or not, has been how to reduce the level of conflict and how to uplift the poorest of the poor hmm. so that they have opportunities. It's very consistent with our concept of service above self and doing good in the world. Great, outstanding. So the next picture we have, uh, again, a uh, picture of five. Well, we talk about the five-point plan, the five aspects of having peace. It always starts with access to water and sanitation. Right. If you don't have clean water, you don't have access to sanitation, then uplifting is a challenge. Mm -hmm. Once you've done that, we do health care. Make sure not just uh, health care in terms of the children, health care in terms of the adults, uh, improving the mortality rate in births, and just making the whole community more peaceful because if you're sick, you're not engaged in activities. Right. You want to provide access to education, and it's not just education for children. When you look at 14% of the world who are illiterate, what we want to do is do that. And then ultimately, what we want to provide is economic opportunity for all so that you can reach your full potential. And we'll talk, as I said, we'll talk about some of these opportunities as we move through the rest of the program. Sounds good. So those five points basically are uh, five of the six areas of focus that you're talking about with the Peace and Peace Initiative being the sixth area, even though it's labeled first. In most of the uh, well, in fact, charts. if you if you look at the slide, what you find is those five together mm -hmm. become peace and conflict resolution Big because point. that's what we're everything that we do in Rotary that affects the lives of those around us or around our world has an opportunity to make us more peaceful. I mean, look at the polio initiative. Mm -hmm. We've gone from hundreds of thousands of people with polio to basically having it trapped in two countries with less than 100 cases a year. Imagine the impact of the lack of that fear. And I grew up in an age where it was fear uh, has on the rest of the world. Now, I noticed, too, with the other five areas of focus, for example, you bring up a good point. Um, I serve a lot of my time in water and sanitation, knowing that that's probably the primary initiative that you have to address before you could address any of the other five, a uh, total of six. However, in each of those phases, even though peace and conflict is the ultimate goal, that point always plays a point from the very beginning because of the disputes of water. Who's going to get the water? 
who's going to be able to afford it and who's going to be given the opportunity for that as it starts through. So each and every one of these building blocks ultimately also are affected by pieces part of the initiative. Absolutely. You know, when you look at the 800 million people who are living on less than a dollar and 90 a day, about 60% of them are engaged in agriculture. Well, agriculture without water is a serious problem. Right. And so when you look at the five elements there, they all, and as you said, the six areas of focus, they all interact together Great. to build a more peaceful world. Great, very good. So our next slide we have here shows... Um, Let's talk, I wanna to talk to you about a couple of projects that have been done within our district to help build peace. And you know, the first question is, peace and sun-dried tomatoes, how does sun-dried tomatoes build peace? Well, I think we're all familiar with the war in, civil war in Bosnia. And in the town of Stolak, where three different ethnic communities live, but I don't think they coexist, they don't even go to the same schools, you had a 50% unemployment with 70% unemployment among women. The Rotary Club of Ojai in our district and the Rotary Club of Stolak in the city of, community of Stolak met with the women and talked to them about economic opportunities. And what came out of that was a Rotary Foundation grant that taught them how to grow, sun dry, and market tomatoes. Now that's really interesting, except the most interesting thing is that of the women on the, com of the, on the cooperative that was doing sun-dried tomatoes represented all three ethnic groups. And so by coming together for economic opportunity, they have learned to live with each other and to find that they can not only coexist, but that can support each other to grow their community. Great. Outstanding. And you have another slide showing another project, I believe. Well, this is the question that when I give this presentation to everybody, I say, this is a picture of latrines. Mm -hmm. Well, how in the world do latrines build peace? And yet, when you think about it, you begin to remove things that cause disease, you begin to have healthier population, but the most important aspect of latrines, and our district is involved in latrines all over the world, is that when girls were, reach puberty, if they don't have a private area to take care of their bodily functions, they drop out of school. By putting latrines, hand washing stations at the schools, we give these young girls the opportunity to stay in school and to grow. And so ultimately latrines, even latrines, build peace <laughs> around the world. Very good point. So let's talk about, you know, we've talked about Bosnia and we've talked about India and we've talked about Mexico. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on in our own nation. As I think you know, there is a global peace index which ranks countries from 1 to 163 in terms of peacefulness. The, 200, the 2019 Global Peace Index ranks the United States 128th hmm. out of 163. I think that's better than the year before when we were 129. <laughs> okay. But we have work to do right here at home in terms of literacy, in terms of access to education, in terms of access to opportunity, and in many cases, just learning how to sit down and talk to each other in a very polarized community in which we live today. Hmm. So that does bring us straight home then, uh, realizing where we stand as far as understanding peace. Evidently, it's something that's kind of lost in translation here. Well, you know, we don't, uh, and uh, you, you just have to look around the country at some of what's going on, but just be, and, as you know, in my own community, a thousand oaks. A year ago, we had somebody walk into a nightclub yeah. and shoot, up, shoot it up and kill 11 people. Yeah. But I think more important than that, we need to understand that inside we are all human, that we're all part of the great humanity that lives on this planet, and that we have to learn to coexist, one of the things we're working on in the district with an organization called Mediators Beyond Borders is a peace conversation 
uh, training that will take place that will just teach us to sit down and le learn to listen to people who think differently than we do and hopefully help them understand why we think the way we do. And again, that builds peace because if people are talking, they're probably not hitting each other. Got it. Very good. And so how do we build peace in our own district? What do we do as Rotarians and the people in the community who come together with us for projects? Well, we feed the homeless and shelter them. We provide health care to the needy. We mentor children in school and provide them educational opportunity. We provide microfinance opportunities. We provide funding to help people start businesses. We look into the community. In fact, in one community, we've actually gone in and mediated discussions between the police force and the members of the community. We look at our community. We ask our Rotarians in each community in this district to do a needs assessment. What are the, what are the high priority items that are inhibitors to peace? And plan projects around that. It's maybe even as simple as 200 people getting together and cleaning a trail. Because when you clean a trail and it's 91 degrees outside, <laughs> you learn that the person next to you has something to offer just as much as you do. Very good. Then the next slide we have shows... Um... Again, I want to talk about a couple of projects. You know, one of the wonderful things about living in this country is that if you're born with a physical, mental, or emotional defect, you have the opportunity to live a useful and productive life. This project is called Rotary Dreamcatcher Park. It's located in the city of Thousand Oaks, and it is a playground funded by Rotary and the Community Recreation and Park Division to the tune of half a million dollars to build a playground for developmentally disabled children. It is a safe place for them to play. It was particularly designed for people with autism, and it's a place where they can come and gather in a safe place. And I think this talks not only about what Rotary does, but what one person, in this case a gentleman from Newbury Park named Ron Block, who saw this need, brought Rotarians and non-Rotarians together, and this is a park, and I invite anybody who's watching your show to come visit it. It is amazing to not only to see the park, to watch the children who are developmentally disabled play just like their classmates do. We actually had um, on the show Ron Block, and oh, he talked okay. about the, the park itself. Outstanding project. It's an amazing yeah, project. It was amazing. Yep, very good. So we do have that in the archives. Next one we have, uh, again, another... Another opportunity. You know, when we talk about economic opportunity and access to capital and the concepts of small loans called microfinance, we often think about the developing world where we can give somebody $150 to buy two cows and they can start a business. Well, guess what? There's a need right here in our district for people to get access to capital. And several years ago, in fact, I believe it started the year you were district governor, we began a rotary project to provide funding targeted toward low-income, Hispanic, primarily Spanish-speaking people, women, in our district, Santa Barbara and Ventura counties in particular, who didn't have, had great ideas but didn't have access to capital. It was a $240,000 grant from the Rotary Foundation. Half of it went to build a, an education curriculum in Spanish and to do outreach to the Spanish community because this was a concept that was new to them. And the other half went to develop loan funds. And what we found in microfinance is that while the capital is important, the two most important elements of, su of a successful business are business education and mentoring. And that's the role that Rotarians could play. They could participate as instructors, and they certainly participate as mentors. 
as of 2018, I don't have the new numbers for 2019, our grant has loaned out $305,000 in loans. We've created 28 new businesses. We have a payback of 98.3%, and we've given almost $4 million a year back to the local community. It's an amazing project, and as a result of this, Rotary is now doing projects in Raleigh, North Carolina. They have for a while in Detroit, Michigan, and they're now expanding into Atlanta with a whole project called Launch My City targeted toward doing microfinance in the developing, in the developed world. Great. Um, I was actually part of that initiative. I was approached for this project 2009, so it's been 10 years to see well, that Well, I'll tell you, forward, if, I so don't know how much great. time we have. The project started because my wife, Heather, who was a Rotarian in her own right, read an article in the newspaper, in the local newspaper, about a man from Mexico who was working in the fields but had come from a family of butchers, always wanted to be a butcher, and knew that he could never get the capital to become a butcher in this country. And my wife, having just finished a microfinance project in Honduras, said, if we can do it in Honduras, of course, this was in, right after the, the Great Recession started, if we can do it in Honduras, why can't we do it in our own backyard? And that led to what has become an amazing project right here in the community. It sure has, very much so. So the next one um, we have? Well, you know, there are lots of symbols for peace. But what we're t challenging Rotarians to do is to go out and build peace. Build peace in their community, build peace in their family. If necessary, build peace within themselves. And then help the 1.2 million Rotarians around the world to build peace in their community so that someday we will not see war anywhere in our world. So I urge everyone on this who sees this, pro this program to take a look at the rotary wheel that they often see when they ride into cities or that is on the lapel of every Rotarian and remind themselves that's a peace symbol and the person you have just met is a peace builder and the community that you just entered is a peace building community. Very good. Uh, it's a good plug on that one. I want to go back towards, I would say, the initiatives that we're talking about because we've gone pretty much to um, one extreme to another. We talk about conflict and the way the world is today with the, all the conflict worldwide. Yet when we talk about peace, it not only includes that, but it includes little small measurable points. Talk to me about the small measurables, those things that you could do as an individual that can make a difference and create peace. You know, that that's a Great question, and none, most of the people in our local communities are not going to pick up rifles and go become peacekeepers. They're probably not even going to go someplace and mediate conflicts. But what they can do is make a difference in the community. I think you know the story of the starfish. The star, a man is walking down the beach, and on the beach he sees thousands of starfish that have been washed in by the tide. And off in the distance, he sees something, and he's not sure what, but it looks like somebody bending down, picking up something, and throwing it into the ocean. And as he gets closer, he sees it's a little boy, and the little boy is picking up the starfish and throwing it into the ocean. The man walks up to the little boy and says, what are you doing? He said, these starfish were all washed up on the shore, and if I don't get them back in the ocean, they will die. The man looks around at all the starfish and he says, there are so many, you can't help them all. The boy picks up a starfish, smiles at the man, throws the starfish into the water and says, well, I helped that one. And to me, that's the story of how we build peace. We build peace in our community one life at a time. And as we start introducing peace into the lives of the people, then they come together as a group and form a more peaceful community.
Great. So, outstanding. That's a great story. Huh? I've heard it a few times, and it's always <laughs> touching. It makes, makes the point come home. If uh, a person, individual, wanted to get involved with something, how would they get involved in a community, in their community, with some of these peace initiatives? Because they're of, oftentimes difficult to find. They are indeed. And, you know, the one thing I might suggest to them is knock on the door of their local Rotary Club. Because what we're working, as you know, we've got the six areas of focus. And those six areas of focus sponsored by the Rotary Foundation are all peace building areas. As I said, we've con we are encouraging the Rotary Clubs to work with their community leaders, their city council, their board of education, their park and rec organization, to take a look around and see what can be done with a group of people who just want to roll up their sleeves and make a difference, whether it's painting a school or, as I said, clearing a trail that was damaged in the Woolsey fire or uh, stocking the shelves at the local food bank to make sure that people uh, have food to eat or uh, one of the grants we're doing in my community, which was a Rotary Foundation grant, is we're adding dental facilities to the local free clinic. There are so many ways that we can work together, and none of these have to be big, humongous, change the world kinds of things. They're little things that we do that mentor a student, work with the developmentally disabled to help them mainstream in school, uh, work with seniors, and more importantly, engage seniors so that they have something meaningful to do with their lives. Uh, look at the low-income housing in your community and what you can do to help. There is so, all you have to do is look around and you will see those projects. I'm going to give you a little quick time for plug here because we're just about out of time. So um, the bottom line is, if a club is not a Peace Builder Club, shortly, tell us how they could find out about becoming one. That is absolutely wonderful, because my goal is that <laughs> virtually every club become a Peace Builder Club. And we've designated Peace Builder uh, for clubs as part of our hope that as they look at the projects they're doing, they will understand its contribution to peace. So, so they, it's, re it's so very, very simple. Got it. And they would find this on the website. Then. They would find this on the, they appoint a peace chair. They do two projects, which can be either local or international, that contribute to peace. They, set, they fill out a report and send us a bunch of pictures, and at the end of the year, we give them a, build, a beautiful banner, but we remind them, just because you met the criteria doesn't mean you should stop right. building peace. Well, Nick, thank you very much for all you've done and all you're doing. Um, ran out of time, but we really appreciate that report. It is my pleasure. Thank you very much, Wade. Thank you. And so with that, everybody, uh, thank you. Take a look at peace and what we have to offer is through Rotary. With that, we will see you next time.